and finally getting around to doing some videos with the Mini Pro chassis dyno. Uh, so I've got two or three of them that I want to uh, present to you guys. And the uh, uh, first one we're going to look at is uh, motor gearing and timing. So we're going to do a bunch of runs with different uh, uh, motor settings and look at the results and see what kind of conclusions we can draw from that. So first up, uh, I just want to uh, show you some runs and give uh, anybody who has this or is thinking about buying this dyno. Uh, some tips and uh, we'll do that first and then we'll be right back. Welcome to a, a series of uh, videos I'm going to shoot on uh, doing some testing with the Mini Pro chassis dyno. So what I've got right now is I've got my USGT car set up uh, on the dyno. A um, couple points before we start doing anything. Uh, first one is is make sure you have your tires sauced. Um, you want as much grip as you can get between the tires and the and the um, rollers. Even though these rollers are knurled, so they have a nice sort of uh, grippy surface that the tire can bite into. You can still get some wheel spin and, and differential tire slip between the front and rear. Uh, so make sure you have your tire sauce. That's why I've got it uh, jacked up here right now because I just finished so saucing and soaking the tires. So the other thing is make sure that your your straps are tight. You want to have them as tight as you possibly can get them. Uh, you should be able to pluck them like a guitar string basically. Um, the uh, last thing is you can run in two-wheel and four-wheel drive mode. Um, to run in two-wheel drive mode, you need to make some changes to the settings on the uh, on the software. Uh, but basically, all you have to do is just leave the front wheels raised above the uh, above the um, roller so that it doesn't contact it, and then you're just driving with the rear wheels. Uh, disadvantage of doing that is you don't really get a true representation of any losses that you have through the uh, through the drivetrain itself. So anyways, we're going to run this one in four-wheel drive mode. So I'm just going to take my blocks out here. Um, the other thing is is that you can... Uh, uh, Mini Pro has a, uh, a little circuit board that you can use to automate this process of, of doing runs. Uh, I'm a little more old school, I guess. I like to uh, have the radio, I like to have the radio in my hand, so that God forbid something goes wrong, uh, you break a strap or you know lose a belt or something in the car goes wrong. Uh, at least you can shut things down quickly um, with the soft, with running a software. You know, there's a possibility it may take you a little longer to do that. So that's just me, but uh, there is that option. So let's do some runs here. Um, so I've got the uh, the software all up and ready to go here, and I'm just going to do manual runs. I'm going to do the test two different ways. I'm going to do one with sort of a little bit of a running start, and the other one from a from a dead stop. So first one we're going to just do with a little bit of a running start. Now the reason, <laughs> reason to do a running start is uh, it helps minimize any sort of wheel spin that you get at, at startup because there's that's where your peak torque uh, is and that's where you're going to get a little bit of wheel spin between the tires and the drums. So that's run number one. So let's do run number two. And the reason you want to do multiple runs is because there is a possibility for getting some glitching and, and noise in the measurement data, so it gives you a chance to throw out any uh, runs that may not give you good results. So we'll do one more. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going to switch over and show you uh, some stuff on the computer, and uh, we'll be right back to you. 
Okay, so let's have a look at uh, what we uh, results we get from the Mini Pro. So what I've got up here is uh, one of uh, three runs uh, graphing the speed versus time results. So you can select and, and look at all the different uh, uh, runs, or you can just pick one and, and look at different, uh, different things that are recorded. Uh, we can look at, uh, this is RPM and uh, current and voltage versus time. Uh, there's a number of other things that you can look at, but I'm not going to get too involved in that at this point. Uh, what I want to do is do some comparisons between different setups uh, using RC Crew Chief. So to do that, you just need to export the files. So if we click on export test number rump one, uh, we can uh, export that to a uh, <coughs> basically a text file um, and give it a name, something that's meaningful. Uh, I was using them as you know USGT as a gear ratio of 396 uh, at 40 degree timing setting uh, because what I'm doing in this series is looking at more gearing and timing, so it makes it a little easier to come back and, and look at. Okay, so let's switch over to RC Crew Chief, and we're going to open the Motor Manager, which is already open. So, and go to the Dyno Analysis tab, and then uh, to load in files, all you need to do is select the file type. So there's MD2 Mini Pro V1 file. There's a V4 file format, which is what we're up to now. Uh, there's also my little Arduino, and uh, if you have some generic data, you can use that and import it as well. So let's just uh, load one of these files in. I'll show you how quickly and easily this can be done. Let's just load this guy and just click Import Data. So there's your current versus time graph. And to do the dyno analysis, we just need to select the time range. So if we select that and click Dyno Calc, there you go. You can see the uh, power uh, graph. This is the torque line, and this is the uh, the efficiency curve. So that's how easy it is to import uh, files into it. Um, the nice thing you can do with RC Crew Chief is you you can load different files in and do comparisons head to head. So I'm not going to bore you with all that. I'm going to switch back because I've already got all that information prepared and you can look at it. So what we're going to look at here is uh, we're going to take fixed timing or sorry fixed gear ratio and, and vary the motor timing and see what effect that has and then we're going to take fixed motor timing and we're going to vary the gear ratio and, and compare those and then last but not least we'll do a, a comparison between all of them. So first up here we've got the fixed gear ratio versus motor timing. So I did uh, three different motor timings, 40 degrees, 47 and a half, and 50. And this is at a gear ratio of 396. This is a 21.5-turn uh, motor uh, for USGT class. So you can see here, this is the RPM versus time graphs. This red line here just gives us a, a way to select a specific point and look at the data at that point. So at 1.6 seconds, you can see here file one, which is the 40 degree timing has the, the lowest speed. Um, what I'm looking at here is the, uh, RPM, um, and this is the RPM of the drum, which is easily converted to speed. Uh, I believe the conversion factor is somewhere around 11. So if I take a, uh, <coughs> 4000 RPM point 4K, RPM multiplied by 11, that's going to give me a, a speed of around 44 kilometers an hour. So looking at the RPM is the same as looking at speed. Uh, I don't have a provision in RC Crew Chief right now to uh, uh, convert that uh, so you can display the uh, actual vehicle speed or the drum speed. So anyway, so we've got at this point, you can see here we've got uh, 40 degrees, lowest uh, amount of current draw, 47 a little higher, um, 50 a little higher again. Uh, the voltages are a function of how much current is being drawn 
out of the battery so you can see with the least current draw we have the highest voltage and so on through. Um, this is the same thing done again with uh, the 3.57 gear ratio uh, and we get similar results but we get more speed. So now our, our maximum speed is 4.7 kRPM which would be over 50 kilometers an hour um, versus on this one we only had 4.4 kRPM. So we picked up four or five kilometers an hour. Uh, what we've also picked up though is a significant amount of current. Uh, so you can see here we're at 15.7 amps, 14, 14 and a half, and 13. So we picked up quite a bit of uh, current draw, but we also picked up speed and acceleration. Now the other thing that's noteworthy here is that you can see at the bottom end of these curves, they all pretty much overlay each other almost exactly. So you're not really getting huge quantities of uh, uh, increased acceleration at the bottom end of the curve where you are seeing the improvement is up at the higher end where you're getting more speed and better acceleration. So the next graph what we looked at was fixing the motor timing and then varying the gear ratio. So here we've got 40 degree timing and we've got the, the low gear ratio the 357 versus the high gear ratio 396. So you can see here again at one and a half seconds why I'm picking one and a half seconds because that's kind of a typical acceleration run you're going to see on on those tracks with the with the inertia that I, I have in the system right now um, or in the setup right now. <laughs> so at one and a half seconds here you can see uh, you know we've got an extra two or three kilometers an hour uh, but we're paying for that by an increased current draw. Now if we go to the 50 degree mark, so now we've got quite a bit more timing in it. You can see here that we're getting, again, yes, more speed. We're at 4.7 um, kRPM at uh, one and a half seconds, but we're pulling 16 and a half amps versus 13 and a half amps. So comparing everything, let's have a look at all of these things together. So as I said previously that the at the low RPM the acceleration of each of these is almost identical. It's not until you get up to sort of the mid uh, mid range that you actually start seeing some significant difference between them. And this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody but more timing and lower gearing produces higher top speeds. Uh, it also produces higher current draws. So motor heating is, is critical to selecting and getting the most out of your motors. So the heating that you get into the motor is a function of the I squared, what's called the I squared R losses that are in the stator of the motor. So I squared being the current, so the current squared, and R being the resistance of the stator. So if we just take a quick comparison here at one and a half seconds and, and compare all three of these. So the big guy here, he's drawn 16 and a half amps and the low end of the range is drawing 10.9. So if we do that little calculation I squared uh, for each of those motors and divide one by the other, you get a 230% increase in the, the um, uh, heating effect. The, power loss or heat loss in the motor itself. 230% is not an ins insignificant number. That's why you see you know temperatures starting to increase dramatically when you start increasing timing and also in, in lowering your gear ratio. Now the other thing that comes into this too is that the stator temperature increases in resistance um, as the motor temperature increases. So this guy here is not squared but it still has an increase. So if we take a uh, a stator from and put a 50 degree C uh, temperature increase or 90 degrees Fahrenheit um, that would take the uh, motor resistance up by about 20 percent. So that's when you start seeing the uh, the power starting to drop off a 20 percent increase in resistance. Uh, the stator resistance is directly related to the power output of the motor. Uh, the lower the stator resistance, the more power it'll put out. The higher the stator resistance, the less. So a 20% increase 
in uh, state or temperature is going to result in essentially a 20% reduction in power. So out of all this, I know this motor quite well. I run it all the time. Uh, I know that uh, between 45 and 50 degrees timing is uh, where I get the most out of the motor. Uh, trying to get it down to this gear ratio isn't going to work. Uh, because of this 230% increase in heating, um, so I just can't keep the temperature of the motor. So I normally run this motor um, about 47 to 48 degrees of timing and around a 3.8 to 1 uh, gear ratio on our track, which is quite small. Um, if you get out to a larger track, then you may be able to you know, get out into this sort of range uh, because you're not going to be pulling all this current down at the at the bottom end of the curve to accelerating in the corners and stuff are going to be operating more in this range as opposed to a wider range. So that's it. Hope uh, that gives you some insights and uh, we'll be back again shortly with uh, another video.